بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی کورس دیٹ آئی ووڈ بی ٹیچنگ ٹو یو گائز دس سمسٹر از مکینکس آف مٹیریلس آئی ایم پروفیسر ڈاکٹر فرید خان آئی ووڈ بی ٹیچنگ یو دس کورس ان دس سمسٹر فیو سلائڈز آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ڈسکس ود یو اٹس اباؤٹ انٹروڈکشن انٹروڈکشن آف مائی سو آئی ایم ڈاکٹر فرید خان I am currently professor in UET Peshawar. I am working in UET Peshawar since 1997. I did BSc in Mechanical Engineering um, in 1997. I did my Masters in Mechanical Engineering Design 2005. And finally, I did my PhD in Energy Harvesting for Microelectromechanical Systems. which is generally known as MEMS in 2011. Uh, this is the email as Farid Khan at the red gmail.com by which you could uh, contact with me if there is any problem or you want to discuss anything. So some more uh, <clears throat> uh, contributions that I have did uh, throughout my stay in UET Peshawar. I designed the postgraduate program at Mechatronics in 2012. Uh, I was postgraduate advisor in Mechatronics uh, department uh, from 2012 to 2018. I remained the sports in charge of Mechatronics department 2014 to 2021. Uh, remained the batch advisor in mechatronics department 2016 to 2021 i also remained the director career development center of uet peshawar uh, from 2016 to 2020 i'm also the founder uh, of uh, a lab in the mechatronics department which is located upstairs near the uh, computer room So I am the founder of Sensor and Energy Harvesting uh, Research Lab, which have been established in 2016. The inauguration video is available on the YouTube. If you want, if you are interested and want to see that, you could click this and you could watch that video. In the class, uh, normally I want uh, to be more. The class, I want that the class. need to be more of a uh, discussion so first i uh, normally deliver the lecture and i request the students if they they have any question they have to note down that question on the paper and at the end of the class at the end of the class uh, we would have a discussion session in that discussion session i would ask the questions i would take the questions from the students so whatever is actually in your mind which is not clear to you and you want to uh, have a discussion on that you could ask uh, from me at the end of the lecture during the lecture i would be not entertaining your uh, questions or <clears throat> i would be not taking the questions you have to write the question on the paper and at the end we would have uh, i would allocate some time for the question answer session this slide you could see um, uh, there is a uh, saying or quotation the man who asks a question is a fool for a minute the man who doesn't ask is a fool for life what i want i want you that you ask question and be a fool inside the classroom and uh, your class fellow laugh at you but i would clear Uh, that question for you rather than you are uh, you want to be shy and you don't want to ask a question and then that thing would be not clear to you throughout your life and you would be living a full life so confucius confucius is a, a well known um, philosopher this is his saying the man who ask uh, asks a question is a fool for a minute and he is better than a man who doesn't ask a question and be a fool for her life so my suggestion ask question make the things clear 
to yourself so that uh, it is uh, it would be beneficial for you throughout uh, your life the course learning objectives of uh, mte uh, triple 2 mechanics of material the course is uh, two credit hour course the prerequisites which you have already um, <clears throat> have studied the MTE 101 engineering uh, uh, statics, the SI 181 applied physics, uh, BSI 232 uh, uh, ordinary differential equations and linear algebra. Uh, course outline in this course we would cover all these topics which are concepts of stress and strain axial loading torsion pure bending shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, beams under transverse loading transformation of stress and strain by axial stress more more circle uh, deflection of beams beams design and columns the recommended books so these are uh, some of the books which uh, I would like uh, to recommend to you uh, it is very very important that you actually read the book uh, the lectures are actually the simplest version or the shortest version of the knowledge which are actually available in the book it is a very good habit that if you read the book once you read the book then things would be very very clear to you it is possible that sometimes by unconsciously we skip something very knowledgeable material uh, during the lectures but that would be available in the book so I would highly recommend that uh, you uh, may uh, borrow these books from the library at least one or two books and during the uh, proceedings of the lectures you uh, consult the books uh, to learn and read uh, in more detail. Objectives of the uh, course to introduce basic knowledge and tools of stress, strain and strength. To learn methods for determining the stresses, strains and deflections produced by applied loads. To apply gained knowledge to solve practical problems course learning objectives CLO CLOs one demonstrate an understanding of the fundamentals of stress and strain number two ability to estimate deformation stress and strain and design members under axial loading and torque draw shear force and bending moment diagram for beams and to be able to design these under different loading scenarios so these were the objectives and course learning uh, outcomes of the uh, course uh, which uh, is actually uh, the main focus uh, during the proceedings of uh, the lectures during this semester so normally uh, when uh, this is actually the first lecture so normally uh, I start the discussion with the students uh, about the applications of the course that is very very important you have to ask why we are studying this course why we study mechanics of materials what are the practical applications whether this is an applied course or this is a theoretical course what is the benefit of this course to the mechatronics engineer? What is the benefit of this course to the engineer? So applications. So <clears throat> starting uh, the applications first we have to discuss what is the mechanics of materials. What? So actually uh, it is very very important that you have to open your mind you have to think 
and you have to think critically as the title of the course is mechanics of materials so what is a mechanics of material so normally if we look at the title that is mechanics of material so that title is comprised of two wordings one is mechanics and the other is materials so I'm splitting the question into two uh, uh, categories one is what is mechanics and what is materials as you may have studied about mechanics you are actually studying about the mechanics uh, since when you were in class 9 or 10 mechanics mechanics is the study of forces the study of the forces which are actually acting on the body the body may be at rest or the body would be in motion so the study of the forces which are acting on the body when the body is actually at rest this is known as statics this branch of the mechanics is known as statics in statics you have studied the bodies which are actually applied or acted upon by uh, a number of forces and those objects were at rest so that branch of mechanics is actually statics and that branch of the mechanics in which we study the forces which are acting on the uh, bodies and the bodies are actually in motion so that branch of uh, mechanics is known as dynamics simply saying mechanics is the study of forces when the body is subjected on the forces what is its behavior how it uh, behaves so that is actually mechanics and the second word was actually material mechanics of material so material material as we discussed uh, that I'm normally discussing that with the students so normally students say that material is actually um, uh, that uh, matter which occupy space and volume so it is a matter material is a matter it is actually uh, it has volume and it has mass it occupies space so material is actually a matter so last year uh, what is engineering material we are coming back to that but first we would discuss material so materials what is in your mind so when we talk about materials so as I uh, discussed with you that whenever while teaching this course I discussed with the students and I asked them what is material uh, they uh, normally uh, their answer is that um, that thing which have volume and occupy space and has mass so matter matter is actually a material so what is in your mind so normally material is uh, available all around us if you look around yourself you are sitting somewhere and if you now at this moment you look around yourself you would see material whenever you go you would see material so material or materials are actually uh, present all around us and we normally see materials we normally use materials in our daily life and normally when we are doing some practical thing we use materials so last year I had a discussion with the students and their answers or examples so I asked them about the examples give me one example and each student gave me uh, gave me uh, one example and normally I want to share uh, their uh, examples with you guys so that the things become more clear to you and you could also start thinking <clears throat> so these, these are the answers which I obtained from the students uh, last year uh, material anything that has uh, some mass and occupy space some common materials and these are actually the examples of materials which I obtained from each student 
so they give me those examples of materials wood plastic iron steel copper gold glass pvc that is polyvinyl chloride uh, lead palladium silicon ceramic rubber petrol clay nitrogen magnesium palladium uh, coal fiberglass nylon hydrogen gas uh, <clears throat> titanium diamond graphite mercury uh, germanium uh, carbon fiber carbon zinc wax chromium nickel tungsten helium polymer composite material optical fiber bronze brass leather concrete thermoplastics cement water uranium sand sulfur calcium barium magnet acetone neon chlorine so these were actually uh, the answers which i actually obtained from the students of the uh, last semester so my next question from uh, the students was that which material is widely used so <clears throat> normally in a world the engineering material that is actually widely used uh, in mechanical engineering and mechatronics engineering is steel steel is actually the material which is widely used in engineering field especially in mechanical mechatronics etc so engineering materials so uh, up till now we just discuss material engineering materials are those materials which we used in engineering products all those materials which normally you see in the engineering products around yourself in your daily life uh, those materials we classify as engineering materials so some examples of the engineering materials which we have already discussed but in order to uh, clarify that more uh, these are some examples of the engineering materials uh, ferrous alloys that is uh, the alloy which is made of uh, carbon and iron so they are known as uh, ferrous alloys and examples are uh, steel carbon steel alloy alloy steel tool steel stainless steel cast iron uh, low carbon steel medium carbon steel uh, high carbon steel etc bronze brass which are actually the alloys of copper uh, aluminium alloy alloys titanium alloys nickel alloys some more examples of engineering materials rubber concrete stone asbestos wood more examples composite materials which are made of fiberglass polymers which are actually flexible like rubber silicon uh, normally we use silicon in ic industry mams or silicon industry uh, silicon in silicon is actually the uh, basic material which are used for microprocessors for the fabrication of microprocessors microelectromechanical sensors or microelectromechanical um, actuators uh, etc another example glass so these all are actually engineering materials and normally uh, you come across these materials when you uh, see an engineering product or when you hold or use an engineering product you could see all those materials uh, there so as we discussed uh, that uh, the material normally which is widely used in civil uh, infrastructure is concrete normally in countries like pakistan india or other countries concrete is widely used in the civil 
infrastructure. For example, we, we are making buildings uh, from concrete, bridges, uh, high risers, etc. Uh, other material that is widely used is steel. Steel, as we discussed, that steel is actually an alloy. It is a ferrous alloy. It is the alloy of carbon and uh, iron. And as we discussed, that it has a number of uh, different types: low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, uh, high carbon steel, tool steel, stainless steel. And in all those uh, types of steels, normally, if you look around yourself in your daily life, uh, one of the steel is widely used, and that type of steel is uh, medium carbon steel. Medium carbon steel. It is also known as mild steel, and the abbreviation normally uh, we use is MS. MS stands for mild steel. So mild steel is actually widely used, and the reason for that is uh, comparatively to other steels, uh, it is uh, less expensive, and it has good formability. It is easy to make product out of the mild steel in comparison to stainless steel. Stainless steel is also a steel, but in stainless steel uh, we add chromium. So in steel, if we add chromium uh, to it, then it would become stainless steel. And chromium is highly resistive to rusting. Then the steel would not uh, rust, although the properties of the steel would uh, change. And actually, the uh, stainless steel would become more expensive as compared to low carbon steel or medium carbon steel and on the same side the uh, it would have poor formability it would be difficult uh, for us to make uh, products from that to make different shapes from the sheets of the stainless steel or bars or rods of the stainless steel in comparison it is very easy for us to make product uh, out of mild steel because it is uh, ductile material, it has good formability, it has good weldability. You could uh, very easily weld uh, different pieces of mild steel. So if you look around, most of the material um, uh, or, or uh, product is made of uh, mild steel. The bodies of the automobile is made of mild steel. The frame of the automobile is made of mild steel. The train frame or body is made of mild steel. The track is made of mild steel. The windows are made of mild steel. The doors are made of mild steel. The railing is made of mild steel. The stairs are made of mild steel. In industry, the railing structure and most of the equipment are made of mild steel. So in machines, in most of the machine parts are made of mild steel. So uh, with respect to mechanical engineering or industry or even uh, household uh, applications, widely mild steel is used. And the reasons are the, uh, uh, it is less expensive as compared to stainless steel or tool steel or other steel or it has a uh, good formability. Although the disadvantage, the disadvantage is actually rusting. So rusting is actually the huge problem in mild steel. But in order to avoid the rusting, normally we have to protect the uh, mild steel from the uh, humidity or environment. So for that, we properly uh, paint uh, the product. So whenever you paint the product properly, or you do the maintenance uh, properly, then uh, the rusting problem, we could overcome the uh, rusting problem. Uh, last year, I have given this assignment to the students. Again, I'm giving uh, the assignment to you. Uh, and that assignment is that how many materials are used in mobile phones? And what are they? So you have to uh, search, Google it, or you can open your own, uh, you, you can look at your mobile and then you could uh, uh, 
make an assignment, write an assignment that what materials are used in your mobile phone. So that is your assignment and you have to submit it. So material, we discussed material, we discussed engineering material and now we would be discussing from concept to product. How we use the materials and we, we are making product. So starting with a very simple engineering product, screw. Screw is made of uh, steel. Uh, it is made of uh, mild steel. It is made of, uh, sometimes we made, uh, it is made of also steel, stainless steel. Screwdriver, if you look at the screwdriver, this portion is actually uh, made of um, mild steel and it is plated chrome plated so you could see a shiny surface on top of that which is actually uh, electroplated uh, chromium is uh, electroplated so that we uh, protect it from the environment uh, because beneath uh, the, the chrome electroplating is mild steel so in order to avoid that rusting problem we have actually electroplated chromium on top of uh, this portion of the screwdriver and if you look at this portion of the screwdriver, it is plastic. Nut and bolts. Nut and bolts are uh, mostly made of mild steel and it is electroplated in order to uh, avoid the rusting problem. In industry, in fertilizer industries, in refineries or other industries, you would see tremendous amount of complicated piping. and machinery such as uh, pumps, compressors, um, turbines and equipment like heat exchangers, um, pressure vessels, um, walls and all of those materials would be made of mild steel. And al already if you have attended a course of a workshop so you may have visited the workshop where you have seen the production machines. In uh, production industry, we use production machines to make products. And those machines are, for example, lathe machine, milling machine, shaper, uh, slotting machine, um, five axis milling machine, six axis milling machine, etc. And all of the major part of the materials you could see mild steel, uh, high carbon steel, stainless steel, uh, some plastic, some rubber etc. In your uh, homes you could uh, see and uh, look at uh, what products, what uh, engineering products are there. For example, a refrigerator is a household equipment or appliance, or a household appliance and it is uh, almost available in all homes and you could see the materials which are used to make this product. You would see plastic, mild steel, rubber, uh, etc. In window type air conditioning, you could see mild steel, uh, plastic, uh, rubber. Inside you would see the compressor, the body of the compressor. And this portion is made of mild steel, you would see copper. Uh, tubing inside the uh, uh, refrigerator, you could see rubber, foam, etc. So these all materials are actually used to make uh, these products. Washing machine materials are there and we use that materials and we, we are from concept to product. So this is actually from concept to product. This portion is made of glass. Uh, this may be uh, mild steel, mild steel, uh, plastic, plastic, plastic. Uh, here this is a, um, a juicer or blinder. So inside uh, you would see stainless steel blades, uh, plastic. The handle would be plastic or rubber. This portion would be uh, plastic. And inside there would be electrical motor you would have a copper winding or aluminium winding and stator would be made of uh, steel etc. Even your laptop is made of material. You would have seen rubber, 
last egg um, uh, LCD uh, is made of uh, liquid inside there is liquid inside this is the CD uh, driver and you could see the aluminium alloy steel etc automobile in automobile we use a number of materials we use aluminium alloy we use my steel the main body of the automobile is made of my steel the uh, chassis frame of the automobile is made of mild steel uh, you this is aluminium alloy uh, the <coughs> um, cylinder block is actually made of cast iron and you could see rubber tubing plastic <coughs> and <coughs> glass the uh, windscreen is made of uh, glass the headlights are made of glass um, you could see rubber the tires are made of uh, rubber so we have the product we have the material and we are using our knowledge and skills of engineering and we are changing that concept into a product if we look at the suspension system of automobile the spring is made of steel shock absorber is made of steel this portion the chassis etc are made of uh, steel uh, this is actually uh, the uh, wheel which is made of uh, uh, cast iron etc. These are the springs, uh, leaf springs um, which are actually made of steel. The tire is made of uh, rubber and this actually uh, safeguard is made of uh, rubber uh, to protect it from the dusty environment etc. In industry, uh, in the machines like compressor, uh, electrical motor, electrical generator, um, pumps, uh, turbines, the main parts, the main material is uh, steel, mild steel, and uh, other materials are also used. So you could now just imagine that we are using all those materials and we are uh, we are actually uh, making those uh, products. Here you could see in the uh, pictures the helmet is made of uh, material. Uh, the <coughs> this here uh, safeguards are made of material which is normally the plastic. And you could see some uh, instrument to measure the vibrations of the machines, which are actually also made of uh, material. Here in this slide you see a crane, this is the boom of a crane and the boom of the crane is actually a truss. It is actually comprised of compression and uh, tensile members which you have actually studied in your statics course. So this boom is used to lift weight or heavy weights. So all this weight is actually distributed over this uh, uh, boom and the boom members, the compression members and the tension members are actually made of uh, mild steel. This is a concrete. Another example of orange train in Pakistan, here you see what in the picture you see uh, these concrete columns. These are the concrete columns. Uh, they are actually reinforced concrete uh, columns or it is a reinforced uh, civil structure. Um, we are using concrete and the concrete is embedded inside the concrete. We have embedded the steel rods in order to reinforce uh, the concrete because concrete is good in compression but it is bad in uh, tension. So in order to uh, make it uh, uh, <coughs> good for the uh, tensile loading we put the actually uh, steel rods in it and also you see you are seeing the beams these are the beams concrete beam again they are reinforced concrete beams you also see the uh, track which is made of mild steel the a number of material is used actually to make the bogies of this uh, train and uh, the most of the material that is is used is mild steel or plastic etc 
some more examples the aircraft's bodies are actually made of aluminium alloy it is made of aluminium alloy because aluminium alloy although aluminium alloy is expensive but it is uh, its density is low in comparison to steel or mild steel so it it has light weight so mostly all of the aircrafts are actually uh, made of uh, aluminium alloy the engines these are the jet engines the blades of the uh, jet engines uh, the moving blade or the fixed blade there these are actually made of titanium uh, alloy here also you you are seeing the um, the picture of the uh, aircraft carrier and these aircraft carriers actually moves through the ocean and it carries tons of the weight of those uh, aircrafts and actually it is made of uh, mild steel helicopter the body is made of uh, aluminium alloy or in some helicopters we are also using uh, composite materials fiberglass etc the blades are made of composite materials etc also materials are used to make the uh, space shuttles which are actually taking the astronauts from earth to international space station so here in these pictures you could see the rockets these are the rocket propulsion uh, power plants this is also the rocket boosters these are the rocket boosters and this is the space uh, ship or space shuttle you could see the nozzles etc so materials are used to make all these uh, products the hat of missiles which pakistan normally pakistan have actually made a number of missiles for example hat of shaheen uh, etc and normally aluminium alloy uh, steel and other materials are used to make uh, the missiles space rovers uh, recently uh, nasa has actually uh, landed its another space rover on the planet mars uh, so those space rovers uh, are actually designed or they are made with the materials you could see a number of materials here for example rubber uh, aluminium alloy silicon uh, cells etc so <coughs> we just discuss that what is material what is engineering material and how we are using the materials and we are making the uh, products for our utility or uh, benefit etc so why we are studying the mechanics of materials what are the practical applications so why we study mechanics of material in order to why we are studying to study the behavior of the material when it is applied by force or forces so what is the what one of the objective to study the behavior of the material when it is applied by force or forces when a body or when a material is subjected to a load or force how it behaves whether it deforms how much stress or strain is produced how much deformation is produced whether that deformation is elongation that deformation is shortening so we have to study all those in this course the behavior of the materials when it is subjected to loading another objective to properly design the part or component for the applied force so when a component or a material is subjected to a load or force so actually we have to properly design that product for so that product what material would be the best if this material is best what would be the dimension of the materials what would be the optimized dimension of the materials based upon the type of the loading so we have to properly design our 
mechanical components or civil components for those loading if we are not doing that then actually uh, we would be we would be saying that we would be not an engineer an engineer always design the product first and then he fabricate uh, later on so if we are not properly designing our product then what would happen the outcome would be catastrophic as you are seeing the outcome uh, on this slide the collapse of the building due to earthquake this portion of the building is properly designed so you could see that it has withstand did it has withstanded the earthquake <clears throat> but this building is not properly designed so maybe that engineer uh, was a bad engineer or maybe they have saved uh, the money by putting less uh, um, steel mild steel rods etc or it is not properly designed so a catastrophe has happened so a loss loss of human lives loss of infrastructure uh, has happened which is not acceptable similarly here you could see that this building has actually withhold the earthquake however you could see that uh, the ruins of the building here which has not properly designed again here you are seeing another building which have been collapsed because of the earthquake and the main reason is that it has not been designed properly designed for the earthquake in that area so if not properly designed or if you are subjecting the uh, product or the component to overloading then what would happen so as you are seeing in this uh, slide that a heavy loaded uh, truck is passing over the bridge the bridge is actually made of the railing is made of uh, steel and here you see that the reinforced the beams are actually the reinforced concrete but maybe the axle the axle which is actually made of the mild steel it has broken and the truck is overloaded so that impact has actually is responsible for the collapse of the bridge so overloading normally in engineering products or machines or uh, civil infrastructure uh, overloading is also one of the major cause for the uh, failure of the uh, component or structure another example here you see uh, another overloaded uh, truck is passing over the bridge uh, which is uh, made of a steel structure however uh, it is not designed for this much weight and you could see that <clears throat> the bridge has deformed uh, because of this overloading another example a steel uh, frame or structure uh, bridge and when an overloaded uh, truck the load is here in the river and when it is it was passing over the bridge uh, the bridge has uh, collapsed some more examples of the failure of the uh, civil uh, infrastructure because of overloading block buckling of steel column these are the steel column so this phenomena is known as buckling and it has failed because of uh, our uh, loading the load on top of it is the load of the concrete uh, and because of that you could see that it has buckled so they are not properly designed so that why it has failed similarly here you see a buckled reinforced concrete uh, column which have been uh, buckled and you could see this uh, broken uh, concrete here and the steel bars so it has not been properly designed for the weight above it that has that has that is why it has been failed so if we are not properly designing or we are not taking in account the loading or the overloading that would happen on the <clears throat> component then you would see a failure i would just show you a boom of the a crane which was lifting too much weight and here you are seeing the boom of the crane which is actually a 
uh, truss uh, structure which is made of uh, Maya steel and it is uh, completely collapsed. <clears throat> you are seeing it is completely collapsed because of overloading. So if you are not properly designing uh, your uh, mechanical component or civil infrastructure or if you are overloading your components then you would see a failure. Here this is a shaft which have been failed because of torsional overload. So we are applying the torque on the shaft and too much torque has been applied and you could see that it has been broken. The gear portion is here and the remaining shaft is inside the machine. This is another failure uh, which has occurred and it has it uh, has been occurred because of fatigue. Uh, when we sub apply the material to cyclic loading then fatigue occurs and uh, initially if there is some defect in the material such as crack or blow, hole, blow holes then slowly and gradually uh, that crack would uh, expand and the material would fail. Here you are seeing some more examples of the shaft uh, failures because of <clears throat> some defects or overloading etc or not properly designed. Uh, failure of gears because of overloading. So here you see that some teeth of the gears have been uh, broken because of overloading or not properly designing. Here you see a crack inside uh, one of the teeth of the spur gear. Here you see the teeth of the spur gear is actually completely broken. And another uh, picture uh, here you are seeing the gear has been broken into two pieces. So if you are not properly designing your components uh, for the loads which you may apply on the component or on the machine then you would see a failure. And failure is completely not acceptable to the <coughs> industry because if a component fails then that machine would stop working for few days and in those few days actually uh, you would be not making the product the company would be not be making the product so <clears throat> it would attribute to a major loss to the company which is completely not accepted so in the industry we want a, we want that our components are properly designed or in, we want skilled engineers who are capable of designing all those products for us so that our components uh, may never fail and our machines never stop working and our production never stops and we make a lot of money. So conclusions of the discussion why we are studying the mechanics of materials Number one conclusion to know the behavior of the material when it is applied by forces. Number two conclusion so that to properly design the part or component for the applied forces and the part uh, never fails. So that is actually the main theme of studying this course mechanics of materials. Once you know this knowledge or you gain this knowledge you would be capable of uh, knowing the behavior of the material when it is subjected to loading. You would be able to properly design the components against those uh, loading. So this course is very beneficial to the mechanical engineer, to the mechatronics engineer, also to the civil engineers. And also when you know this course, then you would be, it would be very, very easy to learn machine design. Um, also, it would be easy to learn other uh, uh, courses such as statics, dynamics, etc. So with this, I am finishing the lecture. If you have any question, we would, uh, I would, we I would be very, very happy you ask those questions. You could just send me an email and then I would arrange a Zoom meeting and we would have a fruitful discussion in that meeting. Thank you.